What could you possibly need a 135mm f1.8 lens for? I can think of a few reasons. This lens is... It's not bad. One hundred and thirty-five isn't the most forgiving focal length for shooting a huge variety of things, but it's a tool that has a very specific purpose for certain situations. If there's things you need to get rid of in the background, let's say you're shooting a wedding or you're shooting some portraits, and the background's not the prettiest in the world, you want the focus to be on the person and you don't want to see what's going on back there. This is going to allow you to do that. We're not talking regular bokeh, we're talking medium telephoto compression with f1.8. One of the first shots I got was this one on the screen right now, and I was just kind of in awe at how it created separation from a distance. Now you get something like that with the 7200 f4, which is my most zoomy lens, but not to the level that this can produce. So you're going to know better than anyone else if this is something you want to utilize in your films, in your photography, because it's a very unique look. You wanna block the frame a little bit, that's where you put things just kind of in front of the lens there to create some depth. This is gonna do a pretty solid job at creating that depth. You want incredible autofocus that tracks ridiculously well. It can do that. Take a look at this shot on the screen right here. This demonstrates how good the autofocus and how how it tracks. It kind of knew that there's people walking by, that's not what we want to focus on. We actually want Tom. That's what we want to stay locked on on. And it did it flawlessly. You want to get the sharpest lens that Sony has ever made? That's it. Everything you're seeing in today's video is shot at f1.8 because I know that's what you want to see. But that's not even where it's sharpest. Between f2 and f8 is actually where it is technically considered Sony's sharpest lens. A bunch of people have the same opinion. There's some charts out there like grading lenses at different apertures and this is the top, tip of the top, top of the crop. Now don't get me wrong, it's heavy, but it's not even that big. That's a Sigma 24 to 70. It's actually nearly identical in terms of size. Look, into the Peak Design 20 liter, and there's, there's so much room in there still on top, like I could fold one of those little dividers down and put a camera body on top of there. It really is a great size for what it can do. We went to this winery at the weekend, I wanted to bring it with me and just see what we could do. You can sit far back and you can get that nice separation. Standing back, standing out the way and still being able to shoot, still being able to get that depth in the background. One of the biggest negatives of this lens is its minimum focus distance being 2.3 feet or 0.7 meters. That means you're gonna be quite far away from your subject to actually get things in focus. There's a switch on the side that allows you to go from 1.5 meters to infinity, 0.7 meters to two meters, and then full, so you get the full range in there. And depending on the setting that you use on the side there, it's going to focus at different speeds. So if your subject is a little bit closer to the lens, you probably wanna go with the closer setting. If it's way in the background there, go with the infinity setting. This is gonna be a fantastic lens for portraits. If you're a photographer, 135 f1.8, that'll be a dream lens for a lot of you. But also for video. Matt, who is Matt Johnson, actually did a video on this last week, literally talking about how this lens is fantastic for wedding films, and I couldn't agree more. Shot a couple at the weekend with this, used this as a ceremony lens, as a speeches lens, and I love the look. Make no mistake, this is not cheap. You pay for what you get, and in this case, you're paying a lot to get a 135mm f1.8 lens. 2,098 US dollars. But there is an alternative, more budget-friendly option for 50% of the cost, literally $1,000, from Samyang. 135 f1.8. Now I tried to get my hands on that lens to compare, genuinely see, double the price, what the difference is. But Samyang just will not get packed to me. So if you are after this and you can't quite fathom to spend a lot of money, then take a look at that Samyang lens. I've not tested it, but it does seem to be quite well reviewed. So there is a lot of reasons why you would want a 135mm f1.8. It's just a beautiful lens, it really is, and it's been a joy to use. I don't want to send it back. It opened my eyes a little bit to different ways of shooting, different ways of thinking of things, and it might do the same with you as well. That's all I've got for you. I will see you in the next one. Take care.